This is Morning Prayers at St. Peter's, Ipswich, brought to you online, a place where we study God's Word together and where we join our hearts and our voices before the throne of God, praying for the needs of our world, our church and ourselves. Welcome this morning. A very good morning, everyone. And thank you for joining with me this morning for our morning prayer and Bible study on this Monday, the 17th of July. Let us pray. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Blessed are you, sovereign God of all. To you be glory and praise forever. In your tender compassion, the dawn from on high is breaking upon us to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look for your coming among us this day, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Psalm for us this morning is Psalm 126. Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The brief psalm of David's expressing the joy of the Israelites when they returned to Jerusalem after being captive in Babylon. The nations recognised the Lord has done great things for them. We too should recognise that the Lord has done great things for us and be grateful. Verse 17, like streams, the Nevig and the Negev is a picture from nature in the southern wilderness of Israel. Through the long summer months, the area is dried up. The channels cut by the winter rains flowing from the hills are now parched gullies. But when the winter rain next comes, they turn into ribbons of green grass, bright with wildflowers. We are today, we are today surrounded by parched lives and dried up spirits of those who do not acknowledge Jesus as the Son of God. We pray that we may be restoring waters to bring these people to the Lord, when they too can go out with songs of joy. The Old Testament readings is from the book of Esther, chapter 4. That's Esther, chapter 4. When Mordecai learned of all that had been done, he tore his clothes, put on sockcloth and ashes, and went out into the city, wailing loudly and bitterly. But he went only as far as the king's gate, because no one clothed in sackcloth was allowed to enter it. In every province to which the edict and order of the king came, there was great mourning among the Jews, with fasting, weeping and wailing, many lay in sockcloth and ashes. When Esther's eunuchs and female attendants came and told her about Mordecai, she was in great distress. 
She's then clothes for him to put on instead of his sackcloth, but he would not accept them. Then Esther summoned Hathak, one of the king's eunuchs assigned to attend her, and ordered him to find out what was troubling Mordecai and why. So Hathak went out to Mordecai in the open square of the city in front of the king's gate. Mordecai told him everything that had happened to him, including the exact amount of money Haman had promised to pay into the royal treasury for the destruction of the Jews. He also gave him a copy of the text of the edict for their annihilation, which had been published in Susa, to show to Esther and explain it to her. And he told him to instruct her to go into the king's presence to beg for mercy and plead with him for his people. Athak went back and reported to Esther what Mordecai had said. Then she instructed him to say to Mordecai, all the officials and the people of the royal provinces know that for any man or woman who approaches the king in the inner court without being summoned, the king has but one law. They will be put to death unless the king extends the gold scepter to them and spares their lives. But 30 days have passed since I was called to go to the king. Then Esther's words were reported to Mordecai. He sent back this answer. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. But if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Then Esther sent his reply to Mordecai. Go, gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, nights or day. And I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and carried out all of Esther's instructions. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The book of Esther is one of only two books in the Bible devoted to the lives of women. The other one being the book of Ruth, although it's actually devoted to the lives of three women. You'll remember King Xerxes had divorced Queen Vashti for disobeying him. And then after spending some months in the king's harem, Esther becomes queen. Mordecai, her guardian, who had cared for her since her parents had died, told Esther not to divulge her nationality. Haman persuaded King Xerxes to issue an edict compelling all Jews to bow down before him. Any disobeying the order would be put to death. Mordecai lies in sackcloth and ashes in the king's gate. He and Esther exchange messages and eventually Mordecai tells Esther she must seek an audience with the king to repeal the edict. With the memorable words of verse 14, For who knows but that you have come to a royal position for such a time as this. Now, I don't believe in coincidences, only God incidences. And here I believe, as Mordecai believed, Esther was in the right place at the right time. I also believe we all are in the right church at the right time for such a time as this, as we hopefully seek God's wisdom as to how we might best serve him. New Testament reading from the second book of Paul's letter to Corinthians. Chapter 6. 
reading through to verse 1 of chapter 7. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 6. As God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favour I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favour. Now is the day of salvation. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path, so that one ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles, hardships and distresses, in beatings, imprisonments and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience and kindness, in the Holy Spirit and in sincere love, in truthful speech and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left, through glory and dishonour, bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as impostors, known yet regarded as unknown, dying and yet we live on, beaten and yet not killed, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, poor yet making many rich, having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians, and opened wide our hearts to you. We are not withholding our affection from you, but you are withholding yours from us. As a fair exchange, I speak as to my children. Open wide your hearts also. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? Or what does the believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I live with them and walk with them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Paul begins this chapter addressing the Christians in Corinth as fellow workers. How aware are we that we are fellow workers, working together with God, seeking through prayer his desires and plans for our lives? In the end of verse 2, is echoes of Mordecai's words to Esther, that you have come to royal position for such a time as this. Paul lists all the hardships he has endured to hopefully commend himself and his ministry to the Corinthians. I would re relate our history of hardships which we have endured in our lifetime through our faith and trust in the Lord. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers it comes from a farming practice of yoking together animals of the same kind to do ploughing, not yoking an ox with a horse, for instance. It might refer to marriage of an unbeliever to a believer, but it doesn't say that. Paul is emphasising the need to separate ourselves from things of this world, not to yoke ourselves to harmful things like substance abuse, pornography, gossip or evil thoughts. The Lord says, come out from them. Then the result will be 
we become God's sons and daughters. Now, now to our time of prayer and the response, the Lord hear us, Lord graciously hear us. So let us pray. We give thanks and praise to you, Heavenly Father, for all the men and women recently deaconed or priested at Peter Tide. Bless and empower their early days of ministry, particularly those who have moved to another church. Enable them, Lord, to settle in safely and be quickly accepted lovingly by their congregations. Heavenly Father, empower your church worldwide, bring in harmony where there is discord, peace and hope where she is persecuted, thinking particularly of our brothers and sisters in India, where their chilled churches have been destroyed and Christians have been killed. Where there is despondency or despair, grant hope and a vision for the future. We pray for our bishops, John of Worcester and Martin of Dudley, our own clergy, Garthian and Paul in our parish. Grant them all, O Lord, wisdom and courage to proclaim the gospel truths. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. On this day in 2022, the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court came into force. Heavenly Father, we pray your blessing on all those involved in the international criminal justice system, praying for effective cooperation of all countries to limit the activity of so many who would exploit the weak and the vulnerable. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the recent measures proposed to lessen the crisis in the National Health Service. May many respond to the advertised vacancies, praying for the right people to apply. Encourage and hope to all existing staff in hospitals. Grant them proper rest and sleep so they may manage the long hours they work without physical or mental breakdown. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, pour out your healing mercies into the lives of all whom we know to be suffering in one way or another. Those with long-term illnesses, those recovering from treatment of broken bones, and those for whom there is no one to pray for them. Restore them, Lord, to full health, so that they may know you care for them and love them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We hold up to you, Heavenly Father, those grieving the loss of a loved one, whether recently or some time ago. Grant them peace and comfort and a hope for their future. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Gathering all our prayers through the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against you, against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And a final blessing. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make us perfect in every good work to do his will, working in us that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Well, thank you for joining with me this morning, and God willing, we can meet again tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. So let us go into this new day in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>